Hello and welcome to another episode of the Investor Financing Podcast. I'm your host, Bo Eckstein. And on today's show, we've got the big kahuna. Please welcome Corey Peterson to the show. He's the owner of the Kahuna Investments. Corey strives to provide his investors with stable cash flow returns and learn long-term capital appreciation by buying multifamily apartments. He's a best-selling author, Why the Rich Get Richer. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, brother. Thank you. It's <laughs> funny. Uh, I must have given you the old bio because like we're at to like 250 now and 250 million dollars. Oh, I assets. got your own. See, that's that's what happens. You that's gave what it. happens. You start growing. It's like you got to keep updating that number. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy journey, though. Yeah, that's that is that's awesome. So so you've grown a lot since I last downloaded the bio. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of, a lot of, uh, you're on your way to a billion dollars in assets pretty soon here. Man, we are, we're definitely, um, stoking up the fire and things are really working well. And I think it's, it's crazy in this market about, you know, you say like, well, is there any deals in this marketplace? And there is, but you've just got to be on the right side of the coin to find them and get them. I mean, you got to have really strong broker connections where they're, texting you deals before anybody else sees them that we've been fortunate enough to have some of those relationships. And, um, and then also it's just really having the capital behind you to power the acquisition side of it. Right. And that's been a, a really neat journey and experience as well. Can you give me like the quick run- rundown of how you got into multifamily? What were you doing before? I know you were lived in Las Vegas in the eighties and, and had some good stories there, but how did you get into multifamily? What's your background? Yeah, thanks for asking. It's a great, it's a great uh, story, and I'll, I'm gonna give you guys the short version of it. But like, for the fact of this, man, I love. Everybody calls me the Big Kahuna, and uh, because I live my brand, and that brand started almost 23 uh, years ago. And what happened was how I got into real estate is I went to Hawaii. My mom was married to this man named Bruce. I call him Bruce Wayne. Uh, he wasn't Batman. But Bruce was loaded. He had lots of money. And uh, he had a house right in Kauai on the beach. And so my girlfriend, now my wife of 20 years, uh, went there. And um, for the first time, it was like, oh, my God, what does this guy do? Because, I mean, it was paradise. And Bruce had fine art and nice cars. And his phone wasn't ringing. Like, he, it was different. I, you know, I've seen money, but I've seen, never seen that type of money. And so I had to ask him, like, what do you do? Because Bruce unequivocally had time and money. And then he said the magic words. He said he was in real estate and that he owned apartments. I left the island thinking he was the big kahuna. And so now I wish it got better. (laughs) Bruce was a grumpy old man and my mom was really pretty. Don't judge my mom. She did get me to Hawaii. Um, but Bruce was never going to teach me. So then I read that little purple book about six months later, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, oh my God, that's what Bruce did. And so I, in my mind, I had a real life mentor that, that actually had done it and I'd seen it and I, I felt it. Um, and then I just went on my journey. I bought every book I could on real estate. I started off as a wholesaler. Like, you know, when you have no money, no credit and or not a lot of everything else, but a lot of want to, I started on the single family side of wholesaling. I'd go to the RIAs find guys that had money, go uh, source them deals, make three or $4,000 wholesale fee. Um, and that was working. And then um, something dramatically changed. And that's when I raised my first piece of private money. I had a guy that I played racquetball with. He lived in a retirement community. I was asking for his help. I said, hey, do you know anybody in that retirement community? Uh, you know, I'd probably pay you 12% and uh, give him no deed of trust. And the next day he calls me up. He goes, well, Corey, my home is paid for. I can borrow money at three. You give me 12, I make a spread. How much money do you need? And uh, so I was like, yeah, uh, I need $85,000. And he said, yes. And so I always say that was like the moment of going into a telephone booth, like, you know, Clark Kent and spin around that son of a bitch coming out like Superman with a big S, right? Um, But that thing of being able to raise capital is really what um, propelled my business. Then I really started doing lots of single family fix and flips, but something was missing. I was still... Um, a raging bull just I was becoming consumed by my work right almost to the detriment of my family and that wasn't what Bruce had shown me that was not that lifestyle and so uh, in 2011 that's when I kind of made the switch I just knew that it was not going to be forever plus the market and single family was changing 
I'd raised a lot, you know, a decent amount of money doing single family fix and flips, but I wanted a better long term um, cash flow solution. And I found apartments. And um, in 2011, I bought my first property for like $3.2 million. Um, I raised $1.4 million of private equity and, uh, and actually held that property for five years, sold it for $8.8 million, made like $4.7 million profit. And um, that one property in the beginning set me free. And now we own o- over $230 million worth of assets. So crazy, crazy, you know, journey. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty amazing. That's why, um, you know, looking at it, I do a lot of small, I was a flipper, you know, on small rental properties. It's like, you know, there you can't really grow your business uh, by doing, you'd have to buy so many duplexes, so many fourplexes to, to meet that one deal you just did. That- you can never scale. In fact, that was really what happened. So I would have left out the part about Kahuna Investments, but like when I was ready to go, I was all I could think about is what do I call my LLC? And I was like, all I could think about was Bruce wanted to be the big kahuna. I was like, I want to make that kind of money. That's how I named it. But um, like a lot of us, when I started off on the single family track, I started buying some single family properties. And then, but then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm only making 200 bucks, 200 bucks. And there's no way to scale it to get the real wealth. And so apartments make all the sense. And it is the right vehicle for wealth creation. So today, so where do you, where are you focused right now where you're buying? I mean, I know it's, there's uh, definitely competition, uh, but, but I have a feeling you're, you're, you're a natural networker, just how we met, you know, you, and I think that's a key too, is to build, be able to build rapport with people and have these brokers really like you. And they're going to send you the deal first because it's a relationship based business. They're going to text you and call you when they text you and call you, then you have a real relationship. If they send you a dumbass email, then you're like every other person on their dumbass list, right? So don't be a dumbass, right? <laughs> Kid, you got to get to know these people. And the best way to do it, I found, is experiences, right? But like, um, for example, I like to rock crawl. Um, so if anybody's an outdoors guy, I'm like, hey, you got to come out. Let me fly you out. Let me put you in my Jeep. And we'll go four-wheeling off-roading. And we'll have an experience together. And I'm going to cement a relationship. Or, you know, if they like to shoot guns or, you know, unless, unless it's golf, I hate golf. So I don't golf. I, I don't I, golf either. I hate golf. <laughs> yeah. I hate that game, man. All it does is piss me off. But, uh, <laughs> but there's a lot of other things you can connect with people on. And I find that that's, that's the most funnest thing to do. And then you're doing business with people that, you know, like and trust and your friends. So like the open, when I'm calling one of those brokers, it's not about the deal. It's about, they're either their hobbies or the things, you know, Hey, you've been shooting any guns lately or what, you know, what have you been doing? And we're talking on that for 15 minutes. And then we go back to me like, Oh yeah. yeah. What's this real estate thing? Let's talk about this. What's up, man. You know, and that's when you can have that relationship, you're going to win way more than, than most other people on the, on the line. Yeah. That's, and that's really, it. And so for what, where we buy right now, we're, we're, I say the Midwest and the South, um, but we primarily buy right now two. we have multifamily and we're also doing a lot of student uh, apartments, student living. In fact, about 70% of my portfolio right now is in student. And the reason for that is I think there's some value to be had there because there's not, you know, with COVID, it scared a lot of people off. And that's a world pandemic. That's a once in like a hundred year flood kind of thing. So I'm, I'm actively trying to buy more of it where other people are still a little bit on the sidelines, not sure. And I buy in those, you know, D2 schools, secondary markets or some primary markets, D1 schools, but not like OU or OSU. I'm, I'm buying stuff like East Carolina university. It's a D1 school, um, the pirates, but um, 25,000 students, but what I love about the student side is mom and dad personally guarantee it. We rent it for 12 months, even though they stay in there for nine. Um, and, you know, it's just got a lot of other things that, you know, and I think it will survive economic downturns, right? I've not owned it, owned them enough long enough to, to really know the difference. But from what I understand, what I've seen in my life is when the market goes crappy, most people will go back to school because they need to get and retrain or do something and they're going to need housing. (laughs) 
and I'm going to be there. Um, so I just, I feel like it's a good asset class because the, the desire of every kid to get out of mom and dad's house um, and go off to school is still as huge as ever. And um, mom and dad seem to want to pay for this experience. Hi, if you'd like to book a call with me and discuss SBA financing, whether it's a 7A or 504, or you just don't know where to start, maybe it's a startup business, you're buying an existing business, you're buying a franchise, you're building a new office building, you wanna expand your existing business, we have multiple solutions. I can walk you through the 7A and the 504 and the SBA loan process. And if you have any other questions on any other types of financing, I'm happy to book a call with you. The link's below. Look forward to seeing you soon. So on your syndication deals, how are you different than every Joe Schmo multifamily syndicator? I mean, what's your, why are, why are limited uh, or passive investors, LPs, why are they, why are they flocking to the big kahuna? What do you think you do that um, others aren't doing? That's kind of been a game changer for you and your business. One very full doc, open transparency. There's a couple things we do differently, but First of all, it's very open book. So I give every, all my investors my bank account statements. Um, I give them the full, you know, all their full financials, trial ba or balance sheet, um, age payables, age receivables, all of it, a full transfer every month. Boom. Here it is on a silver platter. Um, so we give them full financial disclosure for one. And then B, I always say there's not good news or bad news. It's just the news. And so... We don't try to, you know, toot our horns when the highs are good and we, you know, and same thing with the lows or lows because it's still real estate. It, it goes in ebbs and flows, right? Things go wrong in our jobs to mitigate and fix. Sometimes we have real good wins, but you can't be too high or low on any of it. You just say it's the news. And I think people like what I've learned about this. So in, in my life, I used to be a financial advisor. So stocks, bonds, mutual funds, all that stuff. What I realized in that business, by the way, is I had no control. You thought you did until 2009 you know, nine showed up and then you realize you had no control of money. And that's really what really made me go full time in real estate is the fact that I had grown men and women coming to my office crying because their portfolio went to half and there was nothing I could do. And I mean, it's like, you know, it's the market. And then they want to move their money out to charge them. Like that's not even fair or right. What I found in real estate is I have a lot more control, but more importantly, what I've, what I've learned is, People, the way we talk about investments are probably different than a lot of other syndicators talk about it. They like to talk IRR, um, what's your multiplier? I like to talk dollars. I like to talk um, just, so I'll give you an example. We call our, like right now we're doing a deal. We'll call it, we call it six and 12. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's a 6% pref, and meaning that's a payer, right? It pays a 6% check throughout the year, and we pay four times a year. We pay quarterly. Well, people understand that. Then you got to, I always break it down in dollars. So what does that mean? Well, if you give me $100,000, you're going to make $6,000 a year or $1,500 a quarter. And, and so then as I'm talking to that person that's in the stock market, because that's who our primary investor is, is somebody comes from that world and they're like, I want an alternative to that. They don't know people like me yet, and they're, they, but they want to because they want to get off the roller coaster. And so if I was to say 18% return to them, that probably turns them off, I think. Because they think, because their financial advisors been telling them six to eight is the place to be. And if you go to, it was from six to eight to all of a sudden 18 or 20, they're like, no, 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 that's risky. That's too risky. That's, you're speeding. So I've learned not to say those words. I say, it's a 6% pref, a 6% payer. And they're like, okay. And I said, you know, because, you know, what is it? What does Wall Street want you to take as far as a payment uh, when you've got you're all, you know, say you saved, you know, all your life, you got $2 million. And there's Wall Street will tell you, like, live off of 3% of that. Well, 3% of $2 million, $60,000, you may or may not be able to retire for the next 25 years on 60 grand a year. But for us, you know, it's a 6% pref. That's like double, double, 120. Oh, well, I could probably budget on that. So they like that, that piece of it. I go, if all it did was pay you 6%, that's pretty awesome. Because what is out there in the stock market that does that? 
And I think they understand that. They're like, okay, that makes, so it's a good, it gives me a nice, consistent paycheck. Yep. Check the box. Then you get to say, but wait, there's more. more. <laughs> right. And, and this is my favorite one is, you know, rent renters expect rents to go up each and every year. And guess what? We never disappoint them. We always raise the rents, even if it's a little bit, right? And as we raise the rents, we raise the value of the property. And when we do that, we share in that profit with you again. And so that's where we're going to give you that extra, you know, 12% or sometimes we do six and six. All the deals all change, but, you know, an additional 12% annualized for every year that you've been in the, in the project. So now it's 18% return. But it's broken up in a way that they understand it, that they don't feel like now it's a risky deal. Right. At least that's that's been my what I've learned as I educate investors uh, through especially LPs of the nuances of this. And usually what we've we, we've done differently than a lot of other syndicators, instead of doing a traditional waterfall model like, you know, it's 70, 30 up until you're, or, you know, it's a 50, 50 split. Or maybe a lot of times they'll do a 70 30 split till they get, um, you know, 14 percent, then or, or whatever it is, or 16 percent. And they, they eventually they do a 50 50 split at the end. But what happens is that I'm getting paid in a traditional way, I'm getting paid as they're getting paid, right? And so, what we've done is we say it's 100 percent pref on the back end on that sell to our investor until they get a total return of what we said 18 or if it's 20. I don't get paid a dollar. So what I've what I've what I think I've done is I've put my investors on the front end of both the cash flow side, the paychecks, right, and the back end side. Now, um, and why is that important? Because I think investors want certainty, and I've I've learned that that's not everybody's chasing for yield, or at least the people that I'm fishing for and the investors that invest with me, they're looking for more certainty than they are yield, right? And so. Uh, now, the benefit to Corey is if Corey does as an owner operator, if I do go crush something, I will make a lot of money in the end, right? By limiting my investors to only that piece. But I think it's a good trade off, right? Because there's always the backside. And no one ever talks about the, the dark side. But it's true. People like ask me if I've lost money. Yes, on one deal, but like it's still, I've lost money. I had to make, you know, come up a couple hundred thousand dollars to make everybody whole. Um, so they got their principal back, but it's still, it's real estate. Like you can't control everything. Not every deal is an absolute home run. Yeah. And uh, there, there's a lot of newer syndicators right now. Like everywhere you turn, everybody's, you know, they're a syndicator now. And so I think for people that have never lost in anything like, Oh, I've never lost anything. Well, you haven't probably haven't done enough deals first of all. And you've been, you've been in the best real estate market that we've ever seen in our lifetime. This last like seven year run. I mean, it's been like a 13 year bull run and that's historically not normal. Right. So exactly. So the poop is going to hit the fan at some point and then, you know, well, we're going through something crazy right now and interest rates are moving uh, there's still shortage of housing. It's still there's still high demand for rent rentals though. So uh, I don't it's know. It's a really weird market right now, right? Like it really is weird. So and I'll tell you how we're trying to mitigate it, right? Because we're like everybody's a little bit on edge because you don't know what's coming. But here's what I know for a, a, a plain fact: if I can cash flow today, I can cash flow tomorrow, most of the time, right? So in other words. I only buy for cash flow. That's why I buy in the Midwest and the South. I, I buy in markets that I am, you know, maybe that first year might be a little tight, but after that, I'm setting up myself to be able to pay my mortgage and, and live another day, no matter what. And I think there's a lot of new guys that are not in that mindset. We're doing it for the quick, the quick turn to the quick dollar. And listen, I mean, we've all heard the analogy. Sometimes that tide goes out and you realize that you're naked. You know, and I don't ever want that to happen because I know what it's like to have, you know, those the deal that I lost money on, it was a two-year process. And it was a hard two, really two and a half years of having calls with investors and giving them the news. And it wasn't great news. Didn't feel good. 
And so you, when you get that, it makes you way more conservative because, uh, you know, when you raise out, you know, this last year we raised 22 million. I think this year we'll almost raise $50 million of capital. And you've got to be able to, sl- I've got to be able to sleep like a baby. Imagine having $50 million on top of your back if you were not doing it right. That pressure is so immense. And if people do it wrong, that's why they usually off themselves because they can't, like, that's a real thing. And so for me, it just pays to be super conservative and diligent in that, that front end process to not get too excited about anything. That right. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I, I was around during 2007, eight and nine, I was a residential mortgage broker, owned a lot of single family houses that didn't cash flow. And it was a very, I was in my twenties, probably mid late twenties. And God, it was, I always tell people that was my midlife crisis at that age. It was like, Oh, it was so much pain and so much pain. I mean, the, the good thing about real estate is it, it, it will forgive you if you can weather the storm. And so that's the key. It's like, you have to be able to weather the storm and, and, you know, stress test your properties and all the people I interview on the podcast, you know, from multifamily people to, you know, fix and flippers. It's like, it really comes down to like knowing your downside risk and then mitigating as much as you, as much as possible. And, if you're buying a property that breaks even or cash flows day one, you're probably not at high risk versus like doing these huge value ads where you you're expecting to like move rents significantly. And it's your, you know, your, your debt coverage. Yeah. If you get stuck, all of a sudden you're way in a bad spot. Yeah. Well, and I'll give you an example too, Bo. Like, so, I mean, COVID. So I've got student housing properties, (laughs) And let me tell you, I've got some horror stories. I've got one property right now that I have to force feed $120,000 every month. Okay. That's what I have to pay to make sure that I don't lose the property. Right. We went from 100% three years in a row. This is in a smaller school, all of a sudden to 45%. Right. And the following year, we did it even worse. We went to 43%. Right. Now, this year, we're looking to, we're going to probably hit 90%, right? But I had to have enough cash reserves and money, right, to make sure I don't lose the project, right? Now, um, not everybody's set up that way, but I've tried to make sure that as I've made profits and I've made um, good wins, that I didn't go take all my money and put it on red, right? You got to keep some in the house, for a rainy day and that rainy day came and I'm so thankful that I've had some money in the bank and some other deals coming through the pipe to, to um, circumvent um, a catastrophic. I mean, you can never, you never budget a COVID in any, in any performa, but it's the stuff that can happen. Now, remarkably, this is what I love about student is it's rebounded really well. So this year, almost all our properties will be rebounded and recovered um, because COVID's almost finally to the tail end, right? At least I think we most of us can agree, agree with that. At least, and, and colleges are ready to reopen. Everybody's ready to reopen. So, but I mean, I still think some of the travel, like some of the hotels and stuff, I don't think they're all fully recovered yet. And they may not be for a while. People are still not traveling as much as they, they could or would. Yeah, and I think pe- that's good for people to know. Like you, as the person that's running the show, the the, the general partner, you have a lot of pressure on you because you didn't know there was going to be a pandemic. You didn't know that occupancy levels were going to drop by 60%. And um, so it's not for the faint of heart, really, right? Like you got to have kind of a thick skin to be in this business because, you know, you got to be transparent with people and that's sometimes they're difficult conversations. It is, you know, but it's just the reality of like all of a sudden their interest rates jumped up like a bunch and, and, and we couldn't lock in on some of these deals. And I had to call these borrowers like, hey, sorry, your rate's up 2% and what you thought, but we, we can't do forward locks on this. And that's just, you have to be, you ha- I'm buying a, uh, buying and refinancing a bunch of properties right now. And it's like, I have the same sticker shock and like, it's- you Trying to get like, that money in now, right? Like it really is trying to, and right now it's like, how soon can we lock this thing up, right? <laughs> I mean, I've got some property that we're buying right now. We're trying, you know, uh, it, it, it is- we see the writing on the wall. How long is it going to stay? Is it going to keep ratcheting it up? Is it going to flatten out? You know, like these are the things we don't really know. But if you look at the whole, you know, and inflation is a real thing. So, I mean, it's driving 
excuse me, red growth and things like that to, to some amounts we've never seen year over year, but that'll dry up too, right? And so it's like, we've, we've had a good run. Um, there, right now is the time to be a little bit more conservative, in my opinion. Um, I'm still buying, but I'm definitely buying with that thought of, man, I better make sure I can cover all my bets. Yeah, that's, that's really good. So um, tell us about your, your new book that you yeah, just so, wrote. Yeah, yeah. So this is a book called, it's called Copy Your Way to Success, Standing on the Shoulders of Giants. And it really is about my uh, my real estate journey in um, multifamily, from single family to multifamily. Tells the story of what I did, how I did it, how I partnered with capital, um, and a lot of really neat stories and mentors that I that I had along the way. I've always said I've never been the smartest kid in school. I barely made it out of high school. I never went to college, um, so I would be, you know, as most would say, I'm uneducated. But truly, I'm, I'm very educated because I spent a lot of money on real estate courses and seminars and webinars and mentors and mastermind groups and all the the other things that are out there to produce where I feel like I have a PhD in real estate, especially the multifamily side. And so if this, if, you know, if you're thinking about real estate, that's a good book and we'll give it to you for free. Um, If you'll, you'll text the word book, B-O-O-K to 480-500-1127. So 480-500-1127, text the word book, and uh, I'll send you this uh, book for free. Sweet. Gift. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. Yeah. That's yeah. I didn't, listeners listening. I didn't go to, uh, I didn't go to college either. I just went, but I, I'm, I'm like you, I've taken, I study real estate, you know, I'm, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm taking courses. I'm always, I'm interviewing people, right? Every interview I do, I'm getting nuggets from like, you know, I, I got some real good nuggets from you today. Um, I liked how you explained your limited, your, your, uh, LP investors, the basics, Hey, you're going to get a 6% prep. This is what it means in dollars. Instead of like, here's your IRR, you're yeah, we're going to make a 50% return and this and that we're going to return because I think those days of these high, you know, uh, sale prices from a lot of that was just the market moving and that's not typical. So a lot of these investors got super spoiled and the reality is going to set in and like, you got to start setting the expectations. And uh, that's why yeah. I never really raised, you know, I've done a lot of borrowed a lot of money, but not in a syndication for like my fix and flip deals and so yeah. forth. And even on that. So we, most of our deals are six and six, right? 12% money. Um, when we have a large raise, we'll do 18%, but uh, typically our races are 5 million and under. And that usually gets, Six and uh, six and six, or like a twelve percent total annualized return, and then we'll give some incentives for you if you give us more money, right? So if you give us a hundred thousand, it's six and six. If you give us three hundred thousand, it's six and um, eight. Or if you give us half a million, six and ten, right? So 12, 14, 16. We want to reward people to give us more money, but um, sometimes when we have like a seventeen million dollar raise, we'll just say eighteen percent, right? Because like that's a big deal. And I don't want to have to sit there and wait, but moving forward, we're actually going to change the way we're doing. We're actually getting ready. We've been doing this enough now that it's time for Corey and Kahuna to create a fund. And our fund will probably be uh, six and 10, something in uh, 16%. Um, I think there's somewhere so, in the middle. So what do you say? So you're going to get, they're going to get a 6% pref uh, during, during operation and then 10% on the back end for people. So, the, and and on the back end, they're paid first before any of the general partners are paid. Is that yep. how you structure it? So yep. And once we do our fund, the fund will be actually really easier because we can. Our goal was to open up the fund for six months, raise fifty million dollars, and then close that fund and go out and go buy properties with that fund, right? Um, and then start a second tranche um, the next six months, right? And just to keep us in active monies all the way through. We have the deal flow and the deal ability and deal sizing to be able to, to take down and place that capital. So um, we're just in a great spot right now where it makes sense to actually have a fund where before it was always kind of one off. We would do a 506B offering, get a deal in a contract and then, you know, have the time and the length of the contract to go raise that money. Well, it's always like hurrying and scattling to get money. And, and, and when you have a fund, you just raise it all the time. And then once you get, you know, you have $10 million in your fund, even though you're raising 50, but you have 10 million now and you got a deal that needs 10, 
you buy that deal now and you keep raising for the fund and you can just place it as you go. Um, and it's just a simpler, easier, I think, way to, to do it. And does you're married, you're, does your wife work in the business with you or, or she does her own thing or my wife is not full time. She's not part time, but she is sometimes <laughs> and that's perfect. Right. So um, she usually handles our events and our, um, our new investor onboarding, Shelly likes to be a part of that. She likes to love on them and show them Mama Kahuna. <laughs> and, um, and, and from there, that's about the, and she likes to plan events, right? She's our, our event planner. So do you, got, you, do you guys, you offer like kind of like conferences where you teach new investors? Is that the kind of? A little bit. We actually are getting out of that business. So I'm actually doing my last event. It's already sold out. But um, um, for this year that we're only going to do one. Um, and, and we have a podcast as well, Multifamily Legacy Podcast, but um, where we, you know, we teach the business a little bit, but, but mainly um, I, I've chosen to stop teaching. I'll probably do it once again next year. You know, if I do it one time a year, then it's kind of a special thing, but I make way more money and I don't like to be in the guru. Because all the time you see the gurus, that's all they do is guru. I'm an owner operator. Like I like to operate properties. It's what I do best. And it's where I make the most money. And I enjoy it. And so I enjoy teaching as well. But it to teach, to do that thing, you've got to do like 10 other things to be able to get on stage and have a big following. So I've found that I enjoy uh, doing it in a limited amount with a limited amount of people. And then um, and then do what I really love is just running properties, building the, building the team, building the company. And then what do you do on a daily basis to keep yourself sharp? Any personal development? You can wake up and go to the gym. What's your morning? What's your I day look with like? my wife? Right. We walk three miles every day. And um, I find that that's my favorite thing to do. I do go to the gym, um, not as much as I should, but um, I, I, I just like I rock crawl. I do a lot of other things other than real estate. I am not so focused on real estate. That's all I think about. Um, I do a lot of other things. And I think that's the key to living life is to find a happy balance. I've always put my family life first and then my business has to fit in the cracks. And um, that's the only way I've done it. And I live by my calendar. So, so when you go rock crawling, do you have, a, is that a modified Jeep or do you, what do you? Oh yeah. yeah. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a Jeep. That's insane. Yeah. And now I, I want to get a Jeep and I love, I haven't done it in a long time, but I used to love going wheeling when I was a, like, when I was 16, yeah. 17. There's lots just, of trails on Mount Charleston's going up Mount Charleston's right. All those dirt roads yeah. that you see, like, you're like, who gets on that? People like me on my Jeep and we'll just go out and rock crawl and find crazy spots yeah the, my friend just did he like modified a toyota truck in it and he just it's amazing what they can do <laughs> dude people don't even understand I, it, it amazes me sometimes we just took ours this weekend through the river right about six foot of water it felt like it was crazy man we made it through but gosh we were so nervous i was like man uh, i wasn't sure if i was gonna make it all the way through but we did <laughs> Have you Full ever rolled, have you ever rolled it or have you been lucky? No, I life? have friends that have rolled their uh, Jeep. So like we go out and wheel pretty hard. Um, you know, here's the great thing. We always we always say this as you're passing by all the regular stock Jeeps, you say, thank you. Thank you for keeping our insurance low. So when we go out and do our crazy stuff, because it's still just an $500 deductible, $1,000 deductible, you get your Jeep fixed. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This is a great episode. I actually got a lot out of it. I know what I'm gonna, how I'm gonna explain my capital raising when I get into that part of the business because that's that makes a lot of sense and you break it down pretty pretty well. So appreciate your time. It was a pleasure meeting you. And uh, any, uh, where can people follow you? I know we got the book, but if they should they go to your website? Where's the best place for them to go? Yeah, kuhninvestments.com. You go there and uh, click uh, join the deal room. So yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. And thanks, everybody, for staying tuned. And please like and subscribe this, to this video. Or if you're watching it on or listening to it, please uh, like it on wherever you're listening to it. iTunes, Stitcher, God, 20 other places. But anyways, we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much.